Ken. Hey, Rick, how are you this week? Oh, very good, and uh, thank you very much, Ken, from Thanks. Chagrin. For He sent me uh, some DVDs with uh, hives and vines and strokes and white stripes and all kinds and a computer, di all kinds of stuff. I thank you very much. Cool, I hope you enjoy it. And you know what I got for Christmas? A DVD player. Yep. And so I can actually watch these things, and I uh, much appreciate it because, you know, a lot of times you'll talk to folks during the course of a broadcast, and they'll say, sure, I'll do this for you, or sure, I'll do that for you, and sometimes they don't. Well, I, I, I live up, especially on music promises, it's uh, too important a part of my life. That's what brings me to this call. There's something about brand, brand loyalty and brand identification, and uh, that Wallflower song, now that it's, you know, it was played out and beat and probably sort of an irritating choice as a theme song when you, you first started using it. But at this point, since it's not heard on the radio, it, it pretty much is an, uh, uh, an alert to or an alarm to listeners that, uh, that Gilly's on. Well, um, it's interesting you say that because I was thinking about Rush Limbaugh using My City Is Gone, The Pretenders. That's right. He's been using that for years and years, and you don't hear that song on the radio very often. But uh, I've been sitting places... And somebody will go up to the jukebox and they'll pop in a dollar. I was going to say a quarter, but those days are gone. And they'll play that song. And immediately in my head, I think, oh, I'm on in 30 seconds. It's hard not to do. Once a song gets identified to somebody or something, even products in this day and age, you know, it, 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 it is one of the, the possibilities or images that pops into your head. If you were going to choose a song, one that I've always thought would be wonderful bumper music because it's such a long, great instrumental intro, is Marquee Moon by Television. And that's on their debut album that just got re-released about a month ago with a whole slew of bonus tracks. And it's, you know, influential proto-punk, you know, g guitar music from the mid-70s, same scene as Talking Heads and Blondie and Ramones and all that. So, yeah, that's something I'd have to put on a request for. I certainly don't have that in our computer. Well, Marky Moon. I wrote it down. Well, no, 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 that's the song, Marky Moon. Right. Television is the band. Right, right. I mean, I know, I got that. I mean, I just wrote it, I wrote it down so I won't forget. Cool, cool. Well, that's, that, that would be, if I was ever doing a show, that, that would be one of my choices. For well, maybe I, maybe I should use the, that Hey uh, Outcast song, like, religiously, at, say, the bottom of the hour constantly. It's just, it's a snappy little number, and you even see uh, old people with no rhythm at places. All of a sudden, they're bouncing back and forth. They're standing up. They're dancing around. You know, you just see... Uh, Is it or, what you want to be identified by? Uh, old people with no rhythm? No, 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 that song. Well, I don't particularly identify myself with one headlight by the wallflowers, either. I mean, you know, uh, here's how it worked with that song. Uh, either I picked it, or program director Ray Davis picked it. Now, uh, about a year after the program had been on the air, Ray said something to the effect of... I need you, Rick. Well, no, I mean, not, not, he didn't say that. Actually, what he said was... Do me a favor, because um, I need you. And I said, what was that? And then he, he said, well, you know, it was such a good idea, Rick. You know, I said, it was such a good idea. Don't you think that, that I picked that theme song? And I said, Ray, <laughs> I picked that theme song. Ray, oh, no, you didn't. I did. I said, Ray, you know, I picked it. You know, fine, fine then, fine, fine, fine then, fine. You want to take credit for it? Fine then. That's fine. That's fine. And so, well, and now when, if people complain about it, it was Ray Davis's idea. It, it, <laughs> he sounds like pig vomit from the Stern film, and, and I mean, I know pig vomit work, is the big boss there. I mean, no, he sounds more like WNBC, that sort of thing, you know. I don't know. I don't do a Kevin Matheny. I, I do a Ray Davis. Do me a favor, Rick. Let me, let me, let's see. Do me, a fa do me a favor, Rick, because I need you. Do me a favor, because um, I need you. Do me a favor, because um, I need you. Not bad, you know. Close enough. Get him on there and duel him for it so we all can hear how well you're doing. Well, what was funny was, one time, speaking of Kevin Matheny and Ray Davis, they filled in, and I've got to find this tape sometime, they filled in for Mike uh, Trevisano. And Ray was taking the phone calls, and you could tell he was clearly nervous. And he kept saying, WT, uh, he'd say, WTM, you're in the air, WTM, you're in the air. And he, uh, where, where's the A? He kept forgetting the A, it sounded like. And so I came on the air after a Cavs game and pretended that program director Ray Davis had to fill in for Rick Gilmore and did about a half an hour of me doing him taking phone calls, saying, WTM, you're in the air. And people bought it. They thought it was really right. And I thought it was kind of funny to pull one over, and, you know. 
Well, what's really funny is somebody just said to me, they, they said, don't you ever get a phone call from your boss complaining about you making fun of him? I said, don't you understand that's the oldest institution in talk radio is to make fun of your program director? The shtick. Yeah, you know? it's the oldest shtick in the world. And, and, and you can also get your jabs in without fear of <laughs> too much retribution. Well, sure, because it's entertainment. I mean, if you're, if you're being truly mean-spirited, you know, I mean, you know, if you, if, if, if you have a, a, an axe to grind and you're, you're doing it by being truly mean-spirited on the air, that, that's not entertainment. But if you're being stupid and funny, well, that's fine, you know. It's just now, like... now, being smart and funny, you ever hear Gil Scott Heron, Gilly? Yes, I have. How about the song Whitey on the Moon? You know, you were just talking about you got you know spending all the money going up to the moon. Um, that one's, if you'll indulge me, I'll read it to you real quick. A, a rat done bit my sister Nell and Whitey on the Moon. Her face and arms began to swell and Whitey's on the Moon. I can't pay no Dr. Bill, but Whitey's on the Moon. Ten years from now, I'll be paying still with Whitey on the Moon. The man just upped my rent last night because Whitey's on the Moon. No hot water, no toilets, no light, but Whitey's on the moon. I wonder why he's upping me, because Whitey's on the moon. I was already paying him 50 a week with Whitey on the moon. Taxes taking my whole damn check. Junkies making me a nervous wreck. The price of food is going up, and as if that... SH wasn't enough. A rat done sis bit my sister Nell with Whitey on the moon. Wow. Hey. It wasn't he the guy that did the song about the television, the electric nipple? Yep, yep. Okay. Gil Scott Heron. Smart yeah. guy. Yeah, oh, very, very smart. Uh, a little obscene here and there. Have to bleep things out occasionally, or like you did, edit judiciously. Well, I, I, I learned my lesson a few, a few calls ago. Well, I'm going to try and catch another call before the top of the uh, hour. But thanks again for the, for the DVDs. I appreciate it. Let me know if there's any problems. I will. Talk to you. All right, bye-bye.